um, we were working on these two Mies van der Rohe chairs and we just decided we should pull the camera out and show you a little bit about how to get started. That's the tricky part. The wraps that hold the spokes, the weaving is exactly the same all the way down. You finish with the exact same technique. So here's an end from the twining, another end from the twining here. You're gonna do a lot of splicing and the tuck. So here you can see where somebody tapped the material back and dinged it a little. And so just be careful of that, it is soft. So we started this the other day. We've got spokes and a weaver, warp and weft. The wraps help keep these spokes on and they're also what you're going to be using to weave. So it starts with this guy being tucked under and then you wrap on top of it. This first piece is just one spoke and then every other spoke to the end is bent in half and lashed on. If you run out, you just splice on in the same way that you started. We also need to straighten this up a little. Once you get those lashed on, we do the twining. So when you're twining, you wanna make sure these are nice and wet so that they can bend and be pliable. You don't want them to crack in half. This material has a tendency to break in half. So as you make these bends, you can see little creases. Just be really careful. Keep your water bottle handy. Here's what you need. 3.25 millimeter round reed, quarter inch flat oval. You need a clamp and snips and a water bottle, masking tape, some rags. You need this book. It is very helpful. That's how we learned. We can do it, you can do it. Step by step with tips and tricks. Oh, the two links of whole rattan split in half. Those are typically in really good shape on the chair, and so we didn't buy new rattan. I should say not only can you get the complete guide to chair caning from the caning shop in Berkeley, you can also get the materials for your chair. Handsome assistant to cut off the old material. This one's the one that makes me the most nervous, so I'm soaking it a little bit longer. The water is warm from the tap, and we hold it down with towels. Are you done yet? Almost. Almost. It's a big chair. It is a big chair, and it had that um, just that break at the side, and I was kind of thinking of patching it. But then once I started cutting out the other one, I realized it is dry. It is dry. It's super dry. It was not even cutting, but just like snapping. snapping off. Yeah, taking the old stuff off can take 20 minutes or so. Do you want to save this? Well, let's take a good look at it. Sorry for the background, but you can get a good idea of how the folks are set up. And the twining really just supports those bins. These are the two 10 millimeter cut rattan. Yeah, there's a whole lot of untwisting on the sides as well. Tape had to go to the Cairo. While he is gone, I pulled all this stuff out of the tub, put it on a towel, and just covered it with the damp cloth. So we'll be right back with you. But we are ready to go as soon as Dave gets back. And honestly, I'm leaving this stuff on because, man, it makes me nervous. I do not want to break those spokes. So it says to start with one really long strand of the flat oval. And you can see that it's really, it's really long. <laughs> Um, so these shorties that fall away kind of help you determine that you need to grab something from this end. And it really does help to have an assistant, and he's back from the chiropractor. So I'm going to get him to help me. Have somebody hold the end, and you just pull out a couple of pieces. There we go. Put those aside, dunk these real quick, and then put them back under a wet towel. The last person that did this was super nice and they marked off where all the spokes should land. So I'm gonna bend this piece, grabbing the end of the flat oval, bringing it a little bit, maybe longer, probably two and a half of those marks. It's going opposite the first guy. I'm gonna bring this guy under. So as I wrap, 
I am wrapping on top of the end of the round read, and I'm also wrapping the end of the flat oval right here. You wrap three or four times. Coming back around. And this next one is going to go behind the spoke. If you ever need a break, the clamp is your best friend. Now I will get another strand of the round reed for the next spoke. So this is a single. Now I'm bringing a doubled piece right up next to it. I checked to make sure that the doubled piece would follow this deep curve and have plenty left over at the ends. You don't want there to be a lot of space. It's kind of a squared space. So this is where I get really nervous, the crease. They should be right up next to each other. Now I'm going to have to go behind it, carefully bending. And this guy goes around and tucks up underneath. You want these to lay side by side and not crisscrossing on top of each other. And now I need to grab another long piece. So we keep wrapping, adding spokes, making sure they line up nicely up until we run out of this wrapping strand. I got a few spokes in, I'm about ready to tie off, but all of this was making me nervous. You don't want it to break. You also want to make sure the material kind of bends in the shape of the chair. And so I'm going to manage that right now with some twist ties. The paper twist ties can sometimes stain the materials if you have any uh, plasticky twist ties. I'm twisting these together as a pair. Keep the pairs side by side and not crossing. Now that these are paired up, I want to start to tell the reed what to do. It's going to be following this curve following that curve. I'm going to get the first few, tie them to this pole. The next group, I'm going to bring them together and tie them to the pole as well. So we'll have plenty to make this curve and come off to the end. The loop that goes flush and does not wrap around the spokes is here. And then three loose loops this guy is going to be the one that hits the pole flush and thread it through. And I apologize, this is fumbly stuff, but it's almost impossible to, to do it without blocking the work. Okay, I'm going to make sure this is neat. And I'm going to slowly wrap and tighten this down. And make sure I didn't screw it up at the front. This piece is breaking and you don't want to have that right off the bat. Okay, I fixed that one, and I got this guy tucked back under, so now I have to add this guy in a similar way. This new end is going to end up this way. Okay, now I need to go to the back and see what's happening there. There's the end of the new wrap. Here's the bend. And again, it's really hard to get good camera angles because your hands need to be everywhere.
and that's locked in. Keep wrapping, adding spokes, organizing the spokes once you get a few more in. This is the last wrap that goes directly onto the frame and not lashing down any of these warp strands. This is a U-shaped warp strand. And then I've got a, a one that dead ends right here. I wrapped loosely and I'm tucking through. Once I get most of the way through, I'll tighten it down. Cool, I will slice it here and here, and I'll straighten this up. It's hot in here, so we have fans going, and I've broken several strands when I was wrapping and had to replace them. So you wanna make sure you're not gonna break any of this. Be careful not to crunch anything. We need to organize this and get it more like this, and that reduces the risk of breaking things. This is one long piece curled around. One of them goes over the first, under the second. When it comes back around, it comes under the first instead of over, over the second. This piece is gonna come out of here. I'm gonna tuck it in, in the pocket, the corresponding pocket to this. There's a back area where I can tuck this in. So I've got one, two, three, coming out the three consecutive spaces. Putting at this corner, over two, under one. The next one goes over two, under one. Straighten these up a little, squish them to the top. Over two, under one. This next one over two, organize it under one. Now we're going to bring these around and bring them back through the pattern and tuck them in. This one will come this way. So you kind of have this sandwich of the one guy a little tighter around two looser ones, just like you do on the other side. you're a basket weaver you probably had no trouble with that one side is a little thicker than the other but you won't be able to notice that as soon as we start the weavers 
This is a piece of flat oval and I bent it in half, circled the rail, and I'm coming up from under this first one. The oval sides are both facing out, the flat sides are together. I would recommend starting with a long strand. Both strands sandwiched together coming under, over, under, over. Keep wetting these, especially if it's hot and you've got a fan on or a heat vent. Try to keep these guys organized. When you get to the other side, I went over this last one. I'm coming from under here, wrapping a full circle around. Now I can start from the top and go under. Oof. These things start to push up, just keep them, keep them organized. Doing the opposite of what I did before. You may not need to spray yours as much as I am. I've woven as far as I can, and I need to splice in a new piece, but you only want to splice in one of these at a time. So I'll take the short guy. So I'm going to back it out so it can overlap under about this much. There's no great way to do it. If you find one, let me know. But you just get the end and a utility knife and start kind of whittling off. So I did the flat bottom side of this one and it has a nice round flat oval top because this one will now be the top. I'm going to shave down the top of this one from here to here. I don't need to shave the whole length. Really, it's going to end here. So now it'll match up. Weave this back in pattern. And this one's gonna go right on top. So weave it in the same pattern. And you want the end to tuck under. So that's about all we can do for an intro for this chair. It is really hot in the shop in the summertime. You wanna maintain curves so this kind of bends out. So I'm pulling this kind of up, I'm wetting it. And then when I get to the bottom, I wanna make sure I have more space down here. You don't want it to bow as much as it is now, but you also don't want it to bow the opposite way. And then that's gonna cause pressure on the fibers and they'll break very soon. Weave on and the ending is the same as the beginning. Um, if you have done this a different way and you love it, please let us know. We've only done maybe 10 of these. So, um, so they're still pretty new to us, but if we can do it, you can do it. And thanks for watching the Silver River Chairs channel. Check out our other videos on Rush, Lace Cane, Rimpies, Press Cane, Splint Read, all kinds of goodness. And thanks for watching.